Darn. Alright. A tap. I'll go just a nab. Go just a nab. Life, strength, and health. This evening, we wanted to talk about the works of Hed Kafra, who is uh, my mentor in the Temple of the White and Gold Lotus, or the Shrine of the Temple, uh, the Shrine of the White and Gold Lotus. He is now an ancestor, but his works continue to inspire me to this day, especially with the Amin Ra Hesse. So we're going to talk a little bit about Amin Ra, um, we're going to talk about Mook, we're going to talk about Kanzu. And what it is, is that when we're dealing with the Neturu of Kemet, we're understanding that each and every one of these uh, are forces of nature. Not only do we find these forces of nature governing the universe, but we also find these forces of nature within ourselves. So the whole idea is to activate these forces of nature that are in the cosmos within yourself. Because each and every one of us are actually a replica of the cosmos in the fractal form. Each and every one of us are miniature universes within a larger universe. So it's fractal. But they talk about every hologram contains the whole, which consists of smaller parts of itself that are self-similar, you see. So there's a prayer to Amin-Ra. But first of all, before we get into this, we look at the word Amun or Amin, and it means the hidden. And we look at the glyph, and what you see is you see the double reed leaf, and you see a sinet board, and you see a water wave. And it kind of hints that there's a force that governs creation and moves the pieces. The sinet game is similar to backgammon, but at the same time, it's representing the soul moving towards the, or through the duat, the soul moving through the universe and going through various transformations. Just like you go through in life, you have to go through transformations in order to survive. So, Hedy Kafra had um, connected me with the teachings um, maybe over six years ago, about, uh, yeah, about six years ago. And he's taught me about the connection, the divine trinity of Amun, uh, Mut, and Kanzu and how to pay homage to these deities and how they operate within our lives. So we have this prayer, this adoration to you, O Amin-Ra, Mut and Kanzu. Amin-Ra, the bull of Anu, the ruler of all the Neturu, the beautiful and beloved Netur, who gives life by every kind of food and fine cattle. Hail to thee, O Amin-Ra, Lord of the world's throne, the dweller in Wasar, the bull of thy mother that lives in thy field, that extended thy journey to the land of the south. Thou Lord of those who dwell in the west, the governor of Punt, the king of heaven, thou sovereign, sovereign of the earth, thou Lord of the things that exist, thou establisher of creation, thou supporter of the universe, thou art the ones whose attributes are among the Neturu, thou beautiful bull in the company of the Neturu, creator of men and women, maker of the beasts and cattle, Lord of all that exists, maker of the staff of life, creator of the herbs which gives life to beasts and cattle, thou art the creator of things celestial and terrestrial. Now. If we look at the Christian prayer, it talks about our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because they're paying homage to that principle of as above, so below. So when you get into like various forms of either whether it's magic or if it's ancestral traditions, you're going to notice that they connect heaven and earth even in their prayers. Why? Because you want the things that are in heaven to manifest in the physical world. So when you read the Christian Bible, you notice that they're constantly talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, or 12 this and 12 that, right? And some of the other forms of literature, like in Hinduism, they talk about the 72 nadis, 7200 nadis, or in Islamic uh, mysticism, they're talking about the 70, the angels with the 72,000 wings, because those represent the 72 deacons, and these are all astronomical things in which we're waking up within our own physical body, within our own consciousness. So everything that we see manifesting in heaven is manifesting on earth. Even when they talk about the teachings of Ifa, the West African teachings, you know, there's a um, there's a Orisha or being called Orumila. That's who the Babala, that's who the Awo, that's who we connect with whenever we want to do Dafa and do divination. But one of the translations of Orumila means heaven knows the way to salvation. Why? Because everything that happens on heaven is happening on earth. So when you cast Ifa, right, when you do Dafa, when we see those patterns that line up, there's also a universal, there's a cosmic influence behind why the shells fall or why the, um, what we call the opuele, which looks like a chain. 
why it falls a certain way. Because everything we're doing is connected to what's happening in the whole universe. So what you do and what you say is actually affecting the universe because you are a part of the universe. So when we talk about Amun and Amun Ra, we talk about that hidden part of you, and then you have Ra, that revealed part of you. You have your subconscious and you have your conscious. There's the unseen aspect of you and there's the seeing aspect of you. Let's continue. Thou the creator of celestial things and terrestrial. Thou illuminate the whole universe. The Netru cast themselves at thy feet <clears throat> when in thy presence. Hymns to thee, O, uh, o Amin Ra, father and mother, the Netru, who has spread out the heavens and laid down the earth. Thou master of eternity and everlastingness, hail to thee, O Ra, Lord of Ma'at, thou who is hidden in thy bark, and thou that sendeth forth the word of the Netru into being. Thou art Temu, Amin Ra, at sunset, the maker of things which have reason, and however many of their forms, thou giveth them life, and thou distinguish the shape and stature of each form from its neighbor. Keep in mind, each and, of, each and every one of us are expressions of divinity. Each and every one of us are expressions of consciousness, so we got this physical form in which God, or the divine spiritual energy, expresses itself through so each and every one of us is consciousness having a different experience. This is all part of the all. So you cannot die because you're part of the all. Nothing can be actually taken away from the all, but it will be recycled. This is how the Kemite, uh, the Kemetians understood immortality because everything happens in cycles. Everything borns, it dies, then it resurrects. That's how we live, that's how life is, that's how systems and civilizations rise and fall. And it's also, for those who study history, is how they're able to see patterns and virtually see things going a certain way and predict the possible outcome of an event based on the patterns in which have been seen. Algorithm. Ashe. Ashe. Thou hear the prayer of the afflicted, thou art gracious unto him of her that crieth unto thee. Thou deliver the feeble one from the oppressor, and thou judges between the strong and the weak. The happy now rises at thy will. Thou only form the maker of all that is, only one, the creator of all that shall be. Humankind have come forth from thine eyes, the net to root come into being by thy word. Thou make the herbs uh, for the use of beasts and cattle, and the staff of life for the need of men and women. Thou givest life to the fish and the stream and the fowl in the air, and a breath unto the germ and the egg. Thou givest life to the grasshopper, and thou makest to live wild fowl and things that creep and things that fly and everything that belongs in the universe. Thou provide food for the rats and the holes and for the birds that sit among the branches. Thou one, thou only one, whose arms are many, whose arms are many. All men and all women and creatures adore thee and praise come unto thee from the sea. Thou one, the only one who has no second, whose names are many fold and innumerable. What does that sound like? We talk about in Islam, they say Allah has 99 attributes, right? So just to let you know that this knowledge of a supreme being with many attributes that predates the Abrahamic faiths. And it goes back to Kemet, because why? That's where they got this knowledge from. They got it from the Nile Valley. They got it from the African ancestors. Plagiarized. You know? I'm not even going to say plagiarize it. <coughs> I here's, it. Here's what I'm going to say. The ancient Kemites shared knowledge with those who were worthy of it. But when it fell, let's explain something. It fell because of a reason. And the reason was, if you read the Corbin Bible, an astronomical event took place where something fell out of the sky. And it caused all those disasters that it talks about in the Bible. We're going to talk about that later. Okay. Now, see, a lot of people want to say that that's a myth. But guess what? There's evidence that something like that actually happened. And you can find it all in the Sahara Desert where they say all that sand comes from out of the sea. So, yeah. And this is why we understand cycles. Because even in Commission literature... Or even when we look into Hindu mysticism, it talks about cycles, right? Some say five ages, some say four ages. In the Yoruba tradition, it says that we're in the age of Oba Junjun, which is the all-consuming king. It talks about an age where people become very materialistic and all that, right? And most of the traditions, they all line up and they talk about us being in this age. And some would say that we're moving out of it um, soon. But we are in a, stitch, a situation where people are beginning to have knowledge and information revealed to them. So, we look more into 
our past and we look at now and we look at why everybody has this, a little bit of piece of this knowledge is because this knowledge cannot die. There's a spirit behind it. It can't die. No matter how many, uh, how many books they took and thought they were burning, I don't think they burnt that information. They put that knowledge in the Vatican. They didn't burn all those books, man. Of course, of course it's in the Vatican. Yeah, it's in the Vatican. They told you they burnt those books, but ever since then, you know, all their priests have been reading and trying to study that information and trying to see what made the ancient civilizations uh, tick, why they built the pyramids and why they lined them up with Orion's belt. Not just in Kimbe, but it's in, in America and even Angkor Wat and all the other pyramid civilizations around the world because they're put so, there for a reason. You see what I mean? And all of those civilizations were dedicated to mankind as man and woman, male and female. It was dedicated to our evolution. That's why I talked about the pyramids being shaped in a certain way and lining up with Orion and Orion being connected to Osiris or Osir, also known as Sahu. Okay? When Scorpio rises, Sahu goes down. He's not seen for a while, then he comes back up, he goes to the, the underworld, he's stunned by the scorpion, kissed Scorpio, by Judas. Scorpio rises. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to study, and we're going to get more into the astronomical, because we got to look into astronomy, because these stories are dealing with teachings of the stars. So the ancestors were studying the stars, and they were keeping track of things, not just, to, not just for crops and growing crops, but also there's evidence that they were looking at things taking place in the heavens. And it kept records of that. And all the way down to our modern, or so-called modern religions, that keep talking about a day of judgment coming because humanity has a scar on it from a time when our civilizations got destroyed because of something that hit the planet. And something that kind of, um, that every 30, some would say every 36,000 years, some would say that Iberu passes through, but I don't want to put fear in people, but I want people to understand that we deal with cycles, with things rise and fall. Civilization is destroyed, civilization is brought back. We come back and we build it back up again. Okay? All right. Ashe. Ashe. So interesting enough, the word I'm in in the Bible and at the end of most Christian prayers, Hibben Netter. Our priest is this Sashini Meri Amen of the Het Net Sashini Hech Hanub went on a trip to visit Egypt. And when she traveled to the south into what is now called uh, the Nubian section of Egypt, she was surprised to see in one of the villages the home to shrine to Amen Ra. Even Muslims in modern Egypt were, were shown once in the Discovery Channel on a cable television performing the annual solar barge Weya divine boat ritual where they made a replica of the boat of Ra and paraded it through their village the way their ancestors did so. Everyone could see the great netter. Now, I'm going to tell you, that tradition still um, exists. And if, you're, if you study the Mustafa Gadala's books, they talk about this netter being disguised as an Islamic saint. Okay? Kind of like Santeria. So some of these netteru are disguised as prophets in Islamic tradition, as well as in Hebrew tradition in many things. They did not get rid of the knowledge. It just got repainted. Okay? But the knowledge is still there. That's important for us to understand. Now, the thing about it, too, is they have made it illegal for anyone to openly practice what is considered the pharaonic system in Egypt today. In fact, you could be put to death for practicing the pharaonic system today. You know, so they're sitting on all that knowledge. So what I tell sisters and brothers to go and study the various pyramid civilizations around the world. And we also got one in Mexico where there's a comedic unk. There's an unk on one of the temples of Quetzalcoatl in Mexico, in the Yucatan. Yeah, Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl or Quetzalcoatl, which is the feathered serpent. Now in Kemet, those two things are separate because there's the vulture and there's a cobra. It appears that Quetzalcoatl, even though he's linked to Venus, um, is a combination of the serpent and combination of the bird or the vulture, the feathered serpent, the dragon. So Kemet was always about unification, right? Upper and lower Kemet, we have the cobra, we have the vulture. When the two of them are united, we have what is called Semai Tawi. Native Americans also have an interesting story. They talk about in the rest of America, like in uh, North America, we have the bald eagle. But um, down in, um, in Mexico and beyond, it's the condor. And they teach that peace and harmony will be established when the eagle and the condor are united as one. Semaitawi. 
It was always about the unification of two things. And every time we're talking about the unification of two lands, Simatawi, when they talk about unifying upper and lower Kemet, it's also talking about unifying your upper and lower self. Why? Because when you look at the symbol of Simatawi, you see the lungs and trachea. How do you do it? Through the sacred breath. That's something we're going to get into one of these days. So our moon, our amen, represents the unseen part of you. And then Ra represents that part of seen, that is seen. He also represents the hidden fire within you. Because in order for you to exist, you have to have a fire that keeps you alive. Life is a fire. And when that fire goes out, then we go out. Okay? Okay. So he goes on to say, Dr. Ben had written that two Ethiopians taught Muhammad, the founder of Islam, how to pray. In fact, at the end of the Islamic prayer called Salat, the word Amen is the last word said. An artist by the name of Haru Shango made a beautiful session, statue of Amen Ra, that was given to me by my sin, Marie, beloved brother, uh, senior child's grandmaster, and Kim, uh, Kim Hemneter, or Kim Hemneter Habtepi, the high priest of the Kera, the shrine of Kepera. Uh, Senior Chas Kim is also the honorary Hem Netu Tepi and the head Netu Sashini Hechanu, the Kara Amin Ra. By the way, so Kara Amin Ra, that's the shrine of Amin Ra, right? So that's the shrine in which I'm affiliated with at the Temple of the White and Gold Lotus, in which I have the blessings by Heli Kafra. Can you repeat it again? Mm -hmm. So the Temple of the White and Gold Lotus, and you want that in the Kameti. So that's Netu Sashini Hech Hanu. Hech Hanu. Hech Hanub. Noob. Nanub. Hech Hanu. White and gold. Noob. Nubians. Noob <coughs> meaning gold. Also contains the word Neb, which means Lord. And also Nebu, or Neb also means to contain. Mm -hmm. So we get further into it. He also goes into um, talking about how to defeat the dragon Apep, which is believed to um, attack and try to swallow the sun, right? So at night or during the time when Ra is in darkness, we have to deal with Apep. But Apep represents the serpent that swallows us up whenever too many of those laws of Ma'at have been broken. So when you break too many laws, you're endangering not just your spirituality, but also your life force, the way we live and everything else. So that'll bring forth the serpent who will try to swallow your soul, swallow your spirit for living out of harmony with the natural law of things or the natural order of things. So there's a ritual where he shows how you face the four directions and then you strike, then you block. It's martial arts. You face all four directions every day and you fight you shadow box, and you're fighting um, the negative spirits off of you through the form of uh, practice, martial arts, meditation, and all that. Because we kind of constantly make sure that we're spiritually strong. You see what I mean? The all is mind and the universe is mental. So after you have done this ritual, then you go out and you're ready to face the world. You want to make sure that all negative energy or disagreeable energy coming at you, you're already prepared to face it. And that's what you're telling your spirit. When you do that ritual. We do it tomorrow with the martial arts drills mm -hmm. in the four directions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. So when you do your martial arts, you know, you're looking at it as practice, but also look at the spiritual con con uh, concepts of it as well. The reason why you're fighting off the attackers that you're seeing in your mind in the four directions and you're getting into your katas, what you're doing is that you're fighting. You're fighting the negative energies. Right. You're basically putting it out in the universe to be prepared to defend yourself and ward off any form of negative energy that's going to attack. How to block it. When somebody swings at you, that's a question. You block it. You know, you know what I'm saying? And you strike. You know, your answer. Every time somebody swings at you, they're asking you a question. 360 degrees. Your response is your answer. Exactly. You see what I mean? So we do, we want to cover... All of our bases, 360 degrees. When you get into, um, well, Stephen Mailer, he supposed I went and learned from, ha from a brother named Hakim, who is now an ancestor. This was a Nubian brother. And he had taught him that there are 360 netaru. And how most people have maybe only 
five of these natural rules, these forces functioning within their being. So what we want to do is we want to awaken the natural rule within ourselves. Okay, and once again, this goes back to the astronomical with the 36 deacons or the 36 measurements of 10 in which the ancestors divided the heavens up. So a lot, even a lot of this occult stuff, when you run into a, the occult teachings and you keep on running into like 72 spirits like the Goetia, 72 spirits, 72 angels, 72 demons, all these represent different aspects in the zodiac, deacons in the zodiac, which you want to awaken within yourself or overcome. The demonic forces, what they do is that they invoke these forces, or that is they evoke these forces and they want to push them away. That's what they do. So you're getting away the negative forces that are holding you back because they represent aspects of your consciousness that you're trying to get up out of you and challenge and transform. That's the inner alchemy. That's what they do in Western magic. See, that's why you do it. Not so much that you're worshipping 72 demons and all that craziness. That's not what it's about. What you're doing is that you're drawing on uh, something that is a blockage, something that could be holding you back, and you're challenging it. So you got 72 of these demons, right, and 72 angels. How many conspirators did they say closed the lid of Osar before they threw his body, threw him into the, um, into the Nile where he drowned, right? When he put him in a the coffin, there were 72 conspirators working with Set. All of this is astronomical, Right? The five times 72, boom, 360, boom. How many deities were in the Kaaba before the Prophet Muhammad got rid of all the 359 others? 360, right? Bingo. Not too hard to figure out. The astronomical science was connecting heaven and earth and basically being able to transform these heavenly influences within yourself so that you could become a new being. So you could become a resurrected Christ, Christ, Osir, Heru, while you're alive. But you have to cultivate the hidden part of you. You have to tap into the breath. Amen is also the wind. So you learn how to breathe properly. A lot of us breathe from the chest. We don't, leave, we don't breathe from the diaphragm. So one of the reasons why so many people are anxious is because we don't breathe right. We don't eat right. So we have a lot of snot, all this mucus in our system. Right? You got all this mucus in your system. You can't breathe right. Nose is all clogged up. Nostrils ain't open. You need your nostrils to breathe right too because you don't breathe into your mouth. You breathe into your nose. And then that brings the oxygen, puts the oxygen in your brain so that you can think better, think quicker, cultivating the amun or the unseen part of you and then the internal fire. You see? So in order for you to do that, you have to be in harmony. This is why we talk about you have to know yourself. You have to study what you are made of. You have to study what kind of foods that's good for you. Not everybody can eat the same type of foods because different people have different constitutions. So you have to learn yourself. You have to know thyself. You have to know what's good for you. And you also need to know what it is that you're not in harmony with. Things that you put in your stomach. Well, if you keep on eating the same damn thing every night and your stomach is hurting, then you might want to stop eating it. That's telling you something, you know. Um, when I first got back from the military... Man, my diet was horrible. I was eating Swanson TV dinners. I was having acid reflux. I was drinking soda, everything else. So it was a change of diet and a change of attitude that got rid of acid reflux. I didn't have to need, you know, um, pills and all that stuff. All I needed to do was change the way I was eating. Drink more water, eat more alkaline, eliminate the sodas, and stop eating them TV dinners. And next thing you know, <laughs> I was good. I was cool. <laughs> and it was just a simple dietary change. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, there are people that basically eat cake, ice cream, and, a, and, and some steak and wonder why their stomach is messed up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so all that is dealing with self-improvement and how to cultivate the inner aspect of you. You got the viscera, you got like the, um, the deities that represent the stomach. Tomuta and Krebsenu, which is the smaller intestine. Then you got the Hapi, the lungs. And you got Amseti, the liver, or Mesta, the liver, right? And you know what happens if you don't, um, if you don't clean, your li clean your liver out, you're going to be full of anger. If you don't work with your lungs, if your lungs are messed up, you're going to be full of depression. If you got kidney issues, you're going to have, um, you're gonna, you're gonna have fear issues. You see what I mean? All of these things, when you're able to cultivate the life force and get the energy to move correctly, that's when you're on your way to immortality. 
because your body temple is now in full control. That's why you study martial arts. Because you want to basically get what they call ultra instinct, like Goku in Dragon Ball. That's what that is. He gets ultra instinct because he no longer has to think hard about what he's going to do. He is guided to do what he has to do because he's aligned with his spirit. That's the metaphor behind that. So when you're aligned with your spirit, right? You never talk about having a connection of your Ori with Iponri, which is yourself in heaven. You are connected with your destiny. You're united with your destiny. So that's what you want to do. You want to unify with your destiny. If you're out of alignment with your destiny, then that means that you're not practicing my heart. It's plain and simple. But everybody got different destinies. And this is why you go to a priest and they're divine for you. And they'll let you know what your destiny is. But if you're in harmony, if you know, you can look within. I mean, there are people who discover their destiny all the time on their own. But what it is is that our ancestors in many traditions throughout Africa teach that you was given a destiny before you came to the physical plane. But you forgot through the shock of being born. A lot of times our ancestors are trying to get us back on through dreams and stuff like that, but you have to feed your ancestors. In African spirituality, we feed our ancestors. We get them water, we get them food, we treat them as if they're still around physically. Because they're just, they're, they're still around, they're just in a realm of invisibility, or invisible, the invisible realm, Amenta, the hidden world, or the West. <clears throat> See what I mean? So when we're dealing with the Amun and the Ra, when you're breathing, you're generating heat. Movement itself generates heat. Every part of you is held together with 14,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. 14,000 pounds of, square, of pressure. And every atom, you split an atom, an atom can power, power a city for six months. That's the power that you have inside of your physical body. Imagine if you could put the mind behind that and awaken all your other sense faculties. There's a reason why you got this elite that don't that want to um, give you all kind of crazy food, food that they know is going to kill you, right? Putting stuff all in the water. Messing with people's genders. Got people who don't know if they're male or female. All that stuff. They, they're doing that to people. You know? So... You have to learn how to get your hormones back in balance. Hormones, harmony. They got us out of harmony, messing with your hormones. They give you GMO foods that they know is going to mess you up. And a um, few generations later, your child is going to have uh, deformities and mental issues. That's what they're doing. That's what they want. Because they figure that they can control the population that way. But you see, I don't want people to get caught up in fear and conspiracy. I don't want people to get stuck there. But understand the God within yourself. Because that's what you want to connect with. Because they're always showing you this stuff on the news. About how they killed another black man. Or how they got this, um, this issue taking place. How this flu then evolved into a different strand. All this to put fear in you. And then make you take some stupid shots. Got CDs. your kid all messed up. CDs. He can't even sit still in, his, in the class. Because they didn't pump them up with all those crazy Brexit. ass shots. Which we don't need in our system. What you don't need? Huh? What's up? Tell her. Yeah, you know, so this is, if we can, if we can give our children a natural birth, let's do that. If you can do it, you know what I'm saying? Try it. Because the thing about it is that they want to put the fear in you. You know, they tell our elders, well, look, you're old, so this flu is about to come around. If you don't take this shot, you might die. I've had elders say that to me, that this is what they were told, so they're scared. That's what they do. They use fear on you. You see? So that's why they don't want you to understand this spiritual science. Because once you understand your immortality and you're connected to spirit, the fear starts to disappear. You start experiencing different things. Things start becoming clearer to you. Not feeling it at all. You know? Fear. Fear. What's that? False evidence appearing real. Fear. And that's what they do. They're magicians. That's why they keep repeating the same crap over and over again on the TV set. So when you start um, watching TV, you know, you hear the same lie repeated over and over again, you start, repeat, you start believing it. Hypnosis. You get somebody to say something um, enough times, pretty soon, you don't have to get them to say it anymore. They'll start saying it. Right? right. 
Spell spot. Spell spot. Yeah, just say it. Just do it. Just do it. Right. Spell spot. S B O T, right? Yeah. Say it. Spot. Spot. Spell it. S B O T. Say it. Spot. Spell it. S B O T. Say it. Spot. What do you do when you see a green light? Spot it. Go out. You spot it. He said spot. You almost said stop, though. You see what I mean? Uh, yeah, I said, you see what I mean? Spot it and stop. Spot it. Spot it and stop. I spot the green light before. Right? That's the game they've been playing with you in the education system. How you repeat the same lie over and over again. Then he asks you a question. Now you're repeating the lie. Don't even know that you're lying because they're like, then they basically put the lie in your subconscious. True. Right? Boast. B-O-A-S-T. B -O -A -S -T. Spell boast. B-O-A-S-T. Say it. Boast. Spell it. B O A S T. Say it. Boast. Spell it. B O A S T. Say it. Boast. What do you put in your microwave? I mean, what do you put in your toaster? Butter. No, toast. 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 Butter. <laughs> <laughs> you know what people say? People say they put toast in their toaster. But if you put butter in your toaster, damn, man. No, I'm just Got you putting butter. See, I'm. <laughs> Got you putting butter in your toaster. I said microwave. Got you putting butter in your microwave. Now, what do you put in your toaster? Toast. Bread. You see, you see, you uh, did it anyway. You still talk about you put toast in your toaster. Uh, you put bread in your toaster. You see what I mean? But, but that's the game they play. They've been playing with your mind. They've been messing with your mind ever since you was in first grade. True that. You know, telling you lie after lie, and every every time you look around, they told you another lie. You see what I mean? Because they want to keep you from the truth. Because that way, instead of you finding out your destiny, you end up working for Win uh, McDonald's or something. To an old person. I'm not, I'm not dissing people that work at McDonald's. If that's what they want to do, that's, maybe that's their destiny. But what if that's not your destiny? Right? And a lot of times, we have a destiny, and it's within ourselves that we are already being told what to do and where to go. But we listen to other people, and we take their advice. And a lot of times, it takes us away from the destiny in which we are meant to live. They got people policing each other. You see? So, we're saying with religion. Oh, you don't believe in Jesus Christ? Somebody asks you, hey, you set the Lord as your personal Savior? You say, um, well, no, I have a different path. They'll turn their head away and start acting like they never started a conversation with you. That's All what right. people have been programmed to do. Reject people that don't believe in the same thing they do. That's why it's hard to get black people together. Because we have these strong beliefs that come from different angles. This is what um, Al Haj Malik Al Shabazz was trying to do with the OAAU, Organization of African American Unity. He was oh, trying shit. to get he was trying to get sisters and brothers to basically leave the religions at the door and basically focus on things that we needed to take take care of at hand, right? Um, Garvey too. But the thing about it is that we have to overcome the desire to argue because that was what was put into us. Now debating was meant for people to come to a conclusion, actually dialogue. They got it, then it turned into some WWF shit. <laughs> With the E Ridge lights and the shock up, most around 77. All that, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? And the thing about it, while we're up here fighting each other over who's right, you got, you got them, you got the cats that are behind the scenes making all the moves, playing chess. We're still shooting marbles. We're not even playing checkers, we're shooting marbles. <laughs> so it's time for us to stop shooting marbles. If we hear some weird stuff come on YouTube and everything else, I mean, listen to it, but go and do some critical thinking, study and research and see if it's right. True that. You see what I mean? You got a brain, you can think. You can think on your own. You don't need nobody sitting up there telling you how to think and what to think. If something sounds funny to you, and man, just because it sounds deep, it doesn't mean it doesn't sound funny. It's just a whole bunch of people might accept it. How do you know that there's a, not a whole bunch of paid agents, you know, putting this stuff out? <laughs> telling you to reject everything else that you once learned. That's what I'm saying. Use critical thinking. Because people come up with bullshit all the time. You know? right. Get on YouTube and just let it rip, man. Make it up as they go. But we all have the right to utilize free thought. You see what I mean? I'm talking about doing the metal netter or getting into metal netter. Um, I, I'm not even going to say that I'm qualified as a teacher in metal netter, but I will tell people to study with me. That's how honest I am. True, okay? Because the way I look at it, when I look at the metal netter, when I look at um, what's on those walls, when I read it, when I read it myself, it tells me something. But there's also grammatical laws because there's grammar behind it too. 
you know, is they do a rakat ubenet inkut abtet inpet. Grammatical laws. Yeah, there's grammatical laws. You know what I mean? So that so that sentence means all praise be to Ra when he rises in the eastern heaven. That's the first part of the Purim Haru and Ger, the book of coming forth by day from night. Can right? you give me an example of that grammatical law? I'll, I'll get the book. I'll have to all show right, you. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But all you got to right. look at the glyphs because what you're going to see is that the glyphs are set up in a way in which they have the phonetics, right? And then they have the determinants, right? So the phonetics representing the sounds and alphabets and letters. And then you have the symbol which stands next to it. Like, for instance, the way you spell unk. Very simple. You have the water wave that makes the n sound, and you have the placenta or sieve, and it makes the k sound. So it's actually spelled unk, right? And then behind that, you have the symbol of the unk. That's the determinant. Determinant. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? So that so that kind of gives you a hint of what the word is saying. The determinant it shows you the end result of what the sounds are adding up to. It the shows you what, yeah, it shows you basically what the sound is saying. You know, it's the symbol of what the actual word is saying. Because, you know, as far as we know, Kemet, the Kemetic language could have been tonal. You say Ka, that might mean something different than Ka. Kind of like Chinese and whatnot. You see what I mean? But we're still learning. The code of decipherment has been cracked. You know, we've had great scholars that's teaching this knowledge, like Raketi Amen and um, um, Infundishi Jehudimas. And then his other brothers like Sanjeti, who's also teaching the class. I suggest people get into his class too. It's a good class. Online class. Yeah. I'll get you the information. Right. So, looking at the ancestors, looking at their symbolism, a lot of times I invoke, I ask the Hudi and Sashat. I call upon them and I ask them to guide my understanding. And things come to me. You see, because the whole universe is conscious. The all is mind, the universe is mental. The way the commissions, what they did is that they treated like, uh, the universe like everything around them was alive. And you'll still see this continued with the Yoruba. You'll see this with the Congo tradition. Congo. Like for instance, hey, you know, you're trying to keep people out of your door that's going to bring harm. You feed the door. You might put, some, um, put something down by the door. And... Well, I mean, it could be a whole lot of things. I mean, you know, we'll it's get into that more. To keep, people, to keep some out, feed the door. Let's say if you want to bring in fortune, you know, you might put something by your door. Like, you know, like for instance, I'm just going to get real, real simple with this. Some will say that you might put some type of essential oil by your door to raise the vibration, to bring in money and stuff like that. Okay. okay? More indigenous traditions use blood and everything else. Blood for what? To feed the doorway. Or feed, you know, or feed certain things. So, yeah, that's, it gets deep, man. A lot of people ain't ready to get into no ATRs. A lot of people, man, been playing into, the, into all the New Age stuff and the visualization. ATRs? Yeah, African traditional um, religions, as they call them. You know, but a lot of people, they're not ready for that. But I think the ancestors are calling people to check these traditions out. You know, more people are waking up as far as who their ancestors are. And they're being called. They're having dreams and everything else. People call me up all the time talking about I had a dream. I had a dream that an Orisha came to me. Or they're describing an Orisha or a netter. And, and they're not even familiar with what the Orishas are or what the netters are and stuff like that. How people do it all the time. You know, they say, I had this dream. I had that dream. I had a dream that I had a man. You know, there was a man at the crossroads and he was laughing at me. <laughs> I'm like, I know who that is. Oh man, let's go and let's go and look into that. Yeah. Your ancestors are always communicating with you because you don't die. And they're also in your DNA. They live, they're with you right now. You just have to tap into that because you have wisdom that goes all the way back to the Big Bang and beyond. But, however, you're tasked with learning. Because learning gives your existence purpose, making discoveries and experiencing. So when you, when you look into the book called the Hermetica, when Atum is talking to the elementals, he says that I'm going to create a being who will, who will appreciate my creation. That's in the Hermetic teachings, right? So remember I said that the ancestors and those of African traditions, they treat, and not just African, but a, a lot of indigenous traditions around the world, 
They treat the universe as if the universe is alive. Why? Because the universe is alive. It's that simple. That's why when I open up and do libation, I give thanks and praise to every atom. I give thanks and praise to every molecule. I give thanks and praise to heaven and earth. I give thanks and praise. When I knock my foot up against the door, I'm not going to be like, oh man, I just hurt my damn foot. I give thanks and praise to my foot that carries me forward, for you are my foot. Hey, they even pray to and feed their head. In Yoruba tradition, you feed the Ka in Kemetic tradition, the Ba, even there's prayers to the heart. You even talk to your internal organs. If you're having heart problems, then you don't stay all this. Heart. You give things and praise to your heart. You bless your heart. You see how many of us are constantly criticizing ourselves? We curse ourselves all the time. So we got to stop criticizing ourselves and give things and praise for our existence. Raise the vibration of the food. You give things and praise to the spirit of the food that brought the food here. Then you eat that and then you're on a higher vibration. See? That's how the ancestors did everything. And he did it intuitively. They didn't need nobody to tell them a whole bunch of stuff. That was their way of life. We just got disconnected, that's all. We're not appreciative. Americans, America don't teach you to be appreciative of nothing. Boo, America. I mean, you know, but here's the thing. Don't curse the land that you're on, okay? Boo you the think American you're... government. All right, I'll say. <laughs> so you want to make sure, make that distinction, because right. you have to walk on this land. You got to live here. All right. You see what I mean? So when we're looking into, when we're tapping into the consciousness that makes us us, we have to always be in a place in a place we give thanks and praise to the highest aspect of ourselves, because that's what they want you to do. Oh man, they want you to talk bad about your woman and say that oh she ain't nothing, she's loud and she's she's nasty and disgusting. They want they 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 want you to talk bad about your man. Oh you know, a uh, black man ain't nothing. What the what the woo? You know, um, that's what they want. They don't want you to love yourself. They don't want us to love each other. And that's the secret to getting us out of this mess, you see. But they got, we got to turn off the self-critic, which is the brain, because ever since you were young, they were putting lies in your brain. Got you repeating those lies. Remember, they got people stopping at green lights, and they're putting toast in their toaster, like I said earlier. <laughs> because they got you doing these things automatically. You don't even know why you do them. They just keep you doing these things automatically, because they get you out of focus on your destiny. Okay? Have you worked for them. You see, so we're going back to the original topic. We're talking about Amin Ra, you know. Well, how do you become Amin Ra? Hedy Cockford said that he convinced himself that he was Amin Ra. Well, each and every one of us was Amin Ra in that case. Because Amun deals with the hidden aspect and Ra deals with the light, deals with the solar energy. And this is why I'm always talking about solarization. Because you want to become like the sun. So you look at all these ancient traditions that we're talking about, you're going to discover that they had... Uh, sun temples, lunar temples. Let me ask you this. On those Islamic uh, mosques down in the Middle East where you see the big old gold dome and you see um, a, a crescent moon and a star sticking out, all that still look the astronomical. The big old golden part of the dome representing the sun and then the moon and then the stars. Some say that that star represents Venus. But you see, you also got to go back into the ancient world. They didn't just have a lunar calendar. I mean, a, 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 a solar calendar. They had a, a solar, lunar, and stellar calendar. That's what they had it going these on in ancient calendar. All three. All three. All three. All three, brother. Okay. So, so a specific day was also two other days and two different times? No, it was just integrated. You see what I mean? They, they were able to integrate these times. We have gotten away from integrated time. They got us all over the place. They got us running everywhere, ripping and running us on a civic calendar so that you can work a nine to five job. Not be in harmony with spirit. Not know the days with the net to root. You see what I mean? You know, going, going on, ancient um, on the ancient calendars of our ancestors. You know, that's what I've been trying to tell brothers who've been coming to these meetings. I've been talking about Potosic Osiris' calendar. Get the calendar. We're going to get some calendars out. You see, so it's time for people to start ordering those calendars, sure. right? You know, I mean, there's a mind calendar. They're all talking about the mind calendar and everything else. People will be reading the dream spell, talk about the 260 days, you know what I mean? How that adds up to the 144,000 days. Got people late waiting for 144,000 people to come back. All that is astronomical. That's what it is, you see? So we're going to have to have classes on this so that people will stop getting caught up 
in all the spookism and see the knowledge for what it is. Because that's what they want you to do. What's 144,000 days got to do with the 144,000 um, in heaven? In like Christian. You just said it in heaven. <laughs> the same thing that those 72 deacons have to do. You know they said at the top of the pyramid has 144,000 um, um, parts on the top of the pyramid that they stripped and made moss out of? Why did they do Why did they make moss out of? When you conquer a people, the way they were able to conquer the ancestors in Kemet was they had to destroy their spiritual system. They had to destroy their spirituality. They had to get them out of whack with time. How we conquer them back? Get back on time. So get your time back. That's what they sure. stole from you. She stole your time. Got you working these nine to five at McDonald's when you have a life to live. You have a destiny to fulfill. Not an economic you know, slave. An economic slave. That's why they got the calendar like that. So you got to get up and go to work. You look at the calendar, you think it's time to go to work. Look at the clock, it's time to go to work. A lot of people that are homeless, they don't even have a concept of time. <laughs> now, Western time, shoot. True, man. They got you, they got people on the clock. They got people on fortified time. You clock in and clock out. Then eventually you check out. When, after you're an old man and they basically wasted your life because so somebody told you that, hey, you know, you got to basically, it's noble to work a nine to five. Nope. Keep in mind, hey, keep in mind that Bible and everything else, all these religions, I'm not telling you to go and, uh, and, talk, and talk crap about people who practice these religions, but you got to keep in mind that Bible and all that stuff that came after the time of the Ptolemaic period where, um, where Alexander the Great or Alexander the Greek Alexander the Fake, whatever you want to call Alexander him. Alexander Fake. Um, when he decided that he was going to try to conquer the world, and after he passed away, his generals took over, and the Ptolemies basically um, uh, started that whole calendar reform at that point. Or they tried to like get the calendar, knowledge of the calendar from the priests. Didn't get all the knowledge, though, and decided that they were going to do their own thing. So when they um, decided that they were going to try to create their own calendar, it kept slipping back. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. They haven't been in cycles with the seasons. They haven't been in harmony with the natural order of things since. Like losing leap years and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know? So, system works for, the, for people who don't have to clock in. You know, but they fix it so that you have to rock, clock in. Rich people, they don't be, um, they don't need to go to school. They don't go to school. Mm -mm. They have mentorship, tutors. They waste your time with a dumbass education system. I'm not saying don't get educated, but rich people, they do not go to school like you and I do. They have mentors that take them through a process where they learn different things. They basically take on the family business so they can tell, so when they grow up, they tell your children what to do. That's how that is. You know, that's why it's good for us to establish trade, you know, um, in a, basically in a commission um, way of doing things. They didn't de destroy the family like that. The husband can leave his wife. He can work for like six months and come back. If he was in the priesthood temple, in the priestly temple, he'd work in the temple for six months, come back, be with his wife for six months. They keep the stress level up here because they keep you, they keep you so time conscious in a linear way. Mice chasing cheese. Huh? Mice chasing cheese. Yeah. Chasing cheese. Rotten cheese. Yeah, poisonous cheese. Dairy. <laughs> Lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of us are lactose intolerant. I mean, shoot. They tell you, they, when you were young, they told you, you drink a whole bunch of cow's milk, it's going to make your bones strong and everything else. Not really. Shoot, instead, give you a bunch of stomach aches. Yeah. And worse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you see? So, so that's about it, man. So, okay. You know, you just come. I hope I can watch that. No, just come back, like, uh, you know, maybe next week or the week after next. Yep, I hope we, I'm be coming back permanently, anyways. But I'm just going to watch that one. Because I got, man. You dropping so much knowledge, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it like two or three times. I'm dropping like tidbits right now. 
true. I'm not even. That's really, tidbits. I'm not really going in. Not, okay. I'm not really going in. You know, we're gonna go in though. Wait till we have class. Yeah, we gotta warm up. Just we gotta warm us up. Just gonna go in. Mm-hmm. True that. Right. Of course, so, you understand what you're saying to comprehend it. Little by little, bit by bit. You see, because yeah. the thing about it is that we gotta have patience, but they try to rush everything. Remember the way. I got you to say spot <laughs> is that I rushed you. I didn't give you time to process it. That's why people are stopping at green lights. Because they don't really, they keep you so busy in the head that you don't process anything. That's why people say, oh man, I done left my phone. I done lost my wallet. I don't have all my paperwork. Because they keep the stress level. That's why it's good to meditate and breathe and slow all that crap down. You know, just step outside of the matrix and breathe for a minute. Go outside in nature. Go where there's um, uh, negative electrons. Because when you're living in the city with all the positive electrons, people soak it up in all the appliances around you. That soaks up all the negative electrons. I stopped bringing the ionized because I'm, you just reminded me. Yeah, you see, or should I say negative ions, excuse me. You need negative ions. Around here, all throughout the city is positive ions. So that's why people feel tired. You gotta go around mountains. You gotta go around springs. Rivers, trees, exactly. give things to praise the nature. True that. Where the divine dwells, because we're nature. I say. But one of the reasons why they kill, the reason why they can kill you is that they disconnect you from nature and have you doing things that are not natural and have you justifying them. The answer is called living in harmony with nature, my aunt. And living in harmony with your destiny. What are you here to do in the first place? That's the question. Know thyself. All right, so. So anyway, I think I'm about to wrap this up. <laughs> it's getting kind of late. Any more questions? All right. Okay. Can we do the kick? Can we do the SE? Sure. Oh. And that's your rack, I'm in raw. Nuke the tear that I'm in raw. A nuke, I'm in raw. And that's your rack, I'm in raw. Nuke the tear that I'm in raw. A nuke, I'm in raw. And that's your rack, I'm in raw. Nuke the tear that I'm in raw. A nuke, I'm in raw. And let your rack on the run, it's a tiller coming rock, a new coming rock. And let your rack on the run, it's a tiller coming rock, a new coming rock. And let your rack on the run, it's a tiller coming rock, a new coming rock. And let your rack on the run, it's a tiller coming rock, a new coming rock. And let your rack on the run, it's a tiller coming rock, a new coming rock. And let your rack on the run, it's a tiller coming rock, a new coming rock. And that's your rack, I'm in Ra, meaning show me your face, I'm in Ra. Nuke the Tiernet, I'm in Ra. I'm the power of I'm in Ra. A nuke, I'm in Ra. I am, I'm in Ra. But then I say, Uncle Chisinev. Uncle Chisinev. Have a good night.